episode. Up, Let us up, move into up, boxing, friend. y'all. Wow, we have Clubber G, and we know we want to hear what he has to say. But this past weekend in Saudi Arabia, uh, the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world, Alexander Usyk in a split decision victory, uh, two cards to one um, uh, over Tyson Fury. Uh, so basically, just to give a quick synopsis, the, the cards were for uh, Usyk 115-112, and one was 114-113. Fury also got a 114-113 uh, card. Um, the beginning of the fight started off back and forth. Fury tried to be a showman to show that Usyk's jabs weren't landing, but it looked more like a ploy than anything. Uh, middle of the fight, rounds four through seven. If you look at the cards, um, a lot of those, the majority of those rounds went to Fury. But then in the ninth is when everything changed. And I am going to let you, Clubber D, take it from there. Yeah. So this fight, I've been waiting on this fight for a while because you know, what I'm saying we we always want to see who's the biggest and baddest in boxing. Okay, lightweights, middleweights, uh, welterweights. That's cool. But everyone cares about who was the heavyweight champ, who was the baddest man on the planet. Uh, Fury. Something was troubling to me when I saw he was down about 20, 30 pounds from his last fight. He hasn't weighed this light since the second fight with Wilder. So I knew he was taking it serious. And <clears throat> if you ever look back when Fury first fought in America, his first fight was against Steve Cunningham. And Steve Cunningham was a glorified cruiserweight. He knocked him on his ass. He was like the Undertaker, get like, like he, the first fight of Wilder and got up. So mm-hmm. you want to see <laughs> like dead. His first fight in America got, his, got knocked down. He won the fight, but... I was like, damn, you know, smaller guys that are that can actually box probably can give him some trouble. This fight, Usyk had a great game plan. He was already pissed off because this fight got postponed twice. He missed a dog, missed the birth of his his uh, youngest daughter in the last postponement. So where uh, uh, Turkish uh, Sheik had to basically put like ten million dollars on if you get out of this fight, you got to pay this money out of your pocket. But the first three rounds were Usyk. He was doing all that. Fury was doing all that showman stuff. But he was doing what Wilder was attempting to do in the second fight, go to his body and walk him down, mm. all right? Mm. Tyson Fury, for some two things about this fight, you get Fury is a great box. I'm, I'm sorry, Usyk is a great boxer, but he is 6'3". Tyson Fury is 6'9". If you're letting a mm-hmm. man that's 6'3", chase you around the ring, that's optics for the refs, okay? Mm. I don't care who you are, why is a little man chasing a big man to fight? It makes no right. sense. So the first three rounds, the third round could have been a swing round. After that, rounds four through seven, Fury was whooping his ass. Okay. He had him, he had him rocked and stumbled a few times. He was using an uppercut. And once once uh Usyk figured that out, he started going to uh Fury's left. What that showed for me with Fury, he has no left hook. He did not do a left hook to, to Usyk not one time. Once Fury uh, Usyk started getting on his toes and, and going to the left. He was tagging Fury. And uh, if you look at the seventh round, or sorry, the eighth round, he busted his nose open right before the round ended. And then in the ninth round, that's when he landed at one, two, and they had him uh, knocked out. Well, I, I thought he should be knocked out. That top rope, that top rope, that's a knockdown. People need to understand. It's like when Jake Paul fought Tyron Willie the first time, the mm. top rope cannot hold you up. That is a knockdown. They should have right. a yeah. stopped it, 10 count, Thank and then uh, Usyk should have knocked him out. So I, I thought it was kind of fishy. The whole those refs over there, I don't know where uh, the mm. you know, got those refs. I don't know if they're from Great Britain, Johnny McDittons. I don't know what they were, but anyways, they were not not good refs. But uh, Johnny McMuff. Yeah. So you so you believe that? So you so you do ascribe to that fact that the ref possibly could have saved Fury there instead of? Oh yeah. Be, most people say by, by the standing. Can, you okay. cannot. You cannot. The the ropes cannot hold you up. The top rope cannot hold you up. He was. Way over the mud. He was out. Do he look like he looked like the Tasmanian devil? He looked like a whirling dervish the way Usyk was knocking him around. He was Michael coming out the grave and thriller. He was he was coming out, you know, doing all that stuff, <laughs> moving around. He was, he was looking like he looked he looked like a British walking dead zombie. That's what he looked like. Like a tall walking dead zombie. Like they just got like a, a, a NBA two league. But uh yeah, so I for, so from nine to twelve, I'd say twelfth round could have been a swing round. I had Usyk. Winning that fight, I don't, it was close, but I had about three, three, uh, by three points. Fury, I mean, they got an automatic rematch, but the, the IBF's doing some shady shit to where they're stripping Usyk of that belt in about two weeks from now. So this won't be for mm-hmm. undisputed again. But to me, Usyk is probably the best cruiserweight. I, I would say he surpassed Evander Holyfield as far as going up to heavyweight 
and and making this mark. Okay. And as far as my pound for pound, wow, I got over the monster and over Terrence Crawford because of the competition. I like, I love Terrence Crawford. He's my favorite fighter right now. But the monster, in a while, it's not his problem. It's not his fault that he doesn't have the competition like an Earl Spence who Terrence Crawford had to get through to become two time undisputed. And Usyk moved up to heavyweight. He was undisputed at cruiserweight. Moved up to heavyweight. Beat beat Joshua twice. And now he's being fury. So I have to put him up in my number one pound for pound right now. That's all I got. <laughs> and, and so, fo so following up on that though, thank you very much for that that description of the, of the fight, which wasn't was an awesome awesome fight. fight. Um, that was a strong top rope, bro. Uh, oh, dude, I was telling you, yeah, I see that tall, dude. Dude, I'm trying to find the call. The call from Co the call from Jonathan Coachman was amazing. But that's true. When you see the optics, because Fury was so much bigger than him in the ring, just hulking. When you see mm -hmm. that, and then when you see him getting battered around in the ninth round, not even able to stand up, running across the ring like he's freaking yeah, uh, Sting going in for the Stinger splash. I don't even know. Like, you know, he didn't know what he was doing. He was sidestepping. He was doing a hammer dance. He was going to the side. Yeah. Going on. I can't stand to watch um, Fury fight. He might. He like Jokic to a boxer. <laughs> I can't stand to watch him. Ah, yeah, they, they're similar. <laughs> they're similar. All right. I can't. I can't well, watch him box. So then, what? What is? Oh, well, first of all, before we go on with another question, does anyone have any other thoughts on the fight itself? Uh, well, I mean, you know, uh, I, I think uh, I think you hit it right on the head. Uh, uh, it was either you or uh, uh, Clubber that said he, uh, you see pretty much uh, did the game plan that we was hoping Wilder was going to do it. But uh, I, I mean, Fox. and and it sucks because Wilder to to me, man, uh, he has so much potential, but he got he can't. Wilder's a brawler. He's not a fighter. He, don't a box. he can't box. He don't have a box. He, he don't have the skill or technique. If he had. He has I the power, but don't have the skill and the technique. If he had that, nature. I think he would have beat Fury. No, he no, he don't have that. He just don't have that skill and technique. He tried to all brawl him, and it, it, not, it wasn't work. The first fight, to be honest with you. Hey, hey but oh, yeah. well, sure. he should have. But at the same time, he he got them chicken legs, man. He can't yeah. keep skipping leg day, man. Yeah. Right, he doesn't like, run. Ah. That's his problem. He doesn't run, and yeah. he's running this fight. If you don't run in boxing, you're not gonna last. He doesn't yeah. like running. Yeah. Hey, hey, cause my thing is, is hey, hey, when you got them chicken legs, man, he he had a bad, you know, he had trouble running away. I I didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, who who was faster, him or Cassie. You know, <laughs> can't, can't, can't get away, man. Yo, <laughs> it was bad, bro. All right, man, shut it down. <laughs> we ain't there yet. We weren't there yet. No, uh, early. <laughs> it was bad. He wasn't he was trying to disappear on that one. <laughs> Couldn't uh, get away. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it looks really bad. I agree. So Clubber D, how do you feel then this, this, uh, some, uh, uh, we got here on the stream. They're asking, how do you feel about the IBF giving away, uh, or taking away rather the title from Usyk? So it's no longer going to be undisputed well, in the fall. Th that's, that's the thing you got to understand. Boxing is a corrupt ass sport. If they ever investigated boxing, they would shut this shit down. Cause look at it like this. Mm -hmm. They're taking it away because the fighter that they're going to give it to, he's going to be fighting on that five versus five matchman versus Queensberry card on the first. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Philip Porter, which going against uh, Daniel DeVos, who beat Jarrell Miller and, and, and lost to Usyk his fight before, a black British dude. So that's going to be the IBF for the IBF belt. And then the winner of that is going to get Joshua. Joshua will basically probably beat that person and then probably fight the winner of Usyk and uh, Fury too. Now, the reason why I say it's corrupt because Eddie Hearn, who I like, Horwich and, and Joshua, those are his fighters. So my problem is this. Why are you stripping the IBF if he's been waiting forever when you had David Morrell and David Benavidez for WBA and WBC waiting for years to fight Canelo Alvarez, but you guys don't make make them the mandatory challenger as in your, this is your next fight. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the corruption. Like now they got Canelo fighting uh, some guy named uh, something Skull, Marty Skull. I don't know. Some 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 challenger for Marty's IBF. Skull. I don't know. Somebody <laughs> like some. Somebody no one cares about New Japan. <laughs> David Morrell and 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 Benavides had to move up to, to another weight class because they know they're not going to fight uh, Canelo. And that's these boxing these commissions because the commissions, all these belts behind me, they get a piece of the pie when that fighter fights. Canelo's a top fighter, a lot of pay per view buys, so they get more money. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I guess Usyk or Fury don't bring enough money, so the IBF's like, hey, uh, -uh. we we stripped that belt from you. We're gonna send that to somebody else. So it's all about money and boxes. It's, it's corruption. It's all it is. Corruption. 
Awesome. Hey, awesome. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, Clever, let me ask you this. I've been seeing a, a report. They they was trying to get uh, Terrence Crawford against um, Canelo. Yeah. Any 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 um any truth to that? We going we going to get that fight? So Canelo Crawford's fighting August 3rd. He's moving up to 154. Canelo's at 168. I hate that fight because Crawford's too small. He's going to get hurt. Uh, but I mean, he's he has a dog in him where he's going to fight Canelo. He's going to be like Charlo and just run around and have track shoes on for 12 rounds. Um, <laughs> Canelo, he doesn't want to pass the torch. He doesn't want to fight somebody like a young, hungry Den uh, David Benavidez. He doesn't want to fight somebody like David Morrell, a Cuban, Cuban fighter. He doesn't want to pass the torch to them. So he wants kind of easy fights. I get you want to pick and choose. He's at that point of his career. That's fine. But let the belts go if you're going to do that. That's 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 my thing. Crawford, people are like, oh, I want Crawford to fight Boots Ennis. Crawford is going to be 37 in September. Okay, yeah. he wants he wants money, money fights. Okay, so he's mm -hmm. if he can get undisputed at 154, he'll be the first male to get undisputed in three weight classes: 140, 147, 154. Which is that will, to me, if he does that, he's top five boxer of all time. I don't care what anyone says. He's up there with uh, 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 Floyd Patterson. You know what I'm saying? He's he's way up there. A Muhammad Ali type stuff. So uh they offered Canelo 100 million to fight uh Crawford. He turned it down. Mm. They want that fight bad next year, but he doesn't want to do it because man, I I have a hard time turning down 100 million. Well, yeah, it's, tell me about it. Yeah. Right. It's, it's he doesn't want to Canelo make doesn't want to work hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Canelo's on my I'm glad you caught that mark. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you caught that mark. <laughs> Uh, we've been making a lot a lot of innuendos to the diddy situation which we're gonna uh, get into in just a, in just a well, second well. here so thank you uh clubber d any other thoughts on that clubber d as well you had an update because i uh, a correction on a fight that i said would be june 1st has been postponed any yeah, other news we've all we better be have to undispute that with light heavyweight uh that's that's postponed right now they said late 2024 which that's a fight i was waiting for that fight that was gonna be Woo, that was gonna be a good fight. We finally get to see who's the uh, who's the man at one one uh one seventy five, because uh, mm -hmm. that's another. Canelo doesn't want to fight either one of them either, you know. So Canelo's he's in a tough position. They keep going back to Canelo, but you know he's at he's at the weight class below. Um, but that's gonna be for undisputed at one seventy five, and I'm I'm waiting on that one. You know, what I'm saying the next the next big fight is Queensbury versus Matchroom, which is Deontay Wilder's going against Zhang. Uh, this is basically Deontay Wilder's last hurrah at, mm -hmm. at fighting. Um. So that's gonna be what next week, next Saturday. So that should be a good. That's a good card, five versus five. It's gonna be a real good card. But uh, <laughs> Wilder better, you better strap the boots up. <laughs> Zang don't play. He he he'll knock the race off your face. You know, say yeah, that's, yeah, that's Joe Joyce. He will knock the race off your face. Damn, knock the race off your face. That's a lot of beating. <laughs> right. Yeah. Really? Wilder might be light skin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of beating. Any other any any other thoughts or questions for Clubber D? Anybody? No, I don't, I don't I ain't right. like boxing in so long. We'll get you. Hey, yeah, <laughs> sorry, yeah, Jim. We'll get you. We'll get you back. Right. Five thousand. <laughs>